Change Healthcare hack using stolen Citrix account with no multi-factor authentication. Womp, womp, womp. So, um, so they actually did an update on April 30th. They said, Change Healthcare Citrix credentials previously stolen by information stealing malware. And whoever their retainer is is having a good time right now. They're making a lot of money off, off Change Healthcare, United Healthcare. United Healthcare confirms that Change Healthcare's network was breached by the Black Cat ransomware gang who used stolen credentials to log into the company's Citrix remote access service, which did not have multi-factor authentication enabled. So this goes back to me earlier saying about how, because I made a post about this on LinkedIn and I may try to put it here, but this goes back to me talking about how even a novice would know, hey, something important like this Anything we log on onto the network needs to have multi-factor authentication. It needs to be federated, period. Why they didn't have it like that, I do not know. Because it is sometimes where, because I, I don't know how, if Change Healthcare was always just that they own thing and then United brought them. So I do know the sucky part sometimes about mergers and acquisitions Breaking is- that trash. Sometimes you take yep. all the bad stuff that they got going on with their environment and it takes a while for them to get on the same thing that your company is doing. So this may be an issue where like it's not on United, but it is on United because that's still something dumb. But the United Health CEO, Andrew Witte's written testimony published ahead of a House of Energy and Commerce subcommittee hearing scheduled for tomorrow. Hmm. So, of course, the attack happened in February 2024. This impacted a wide range of critical services used by healthcare providers across the U.S., including payment processing, prescription writing, and insurance claims. It caused financial damages estimated at $872 million. So that's really close to a billion dollars. Now, it's much cheaper to just hire capable individuals. Right. Don't you right. think? Right. <laughs> This is always so. This will be always talk about in cybersecurity when it comes to incidents is not only the money that it costs you, but now your reputation. But the only thing that benefits insurance in this thing right now is insurance kind of got a monopoly on everybody. You either going to use what Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, United Healthcare, um, some other ones out there, but. MetLife, like some people got different things, but for the most part, they're like a big, <laughs> I just thought about Kitchen Lamar, but I think it's like a big three or something. Destiny, can you look that up while I'm, while I'm reading this, see if like what's the big three of like healthcare or whatever? I got you. So that's typically what we see a lot of. Um, previously, the Black Cat ransomware gang claimed they had received a $22 million ransom payment from United Health, which was stolen from the affiliate who conducted the attack. Ran off on the plug twice. He started calling nine, Top calling three, Mike. United Health Group. <laughs> he said he kissed me on his last United album. Health Group, Cigna, and Elevance Health are the top three healthcare systems in the U.S. Yeah, so it's pretty much like what we got going on now when it comes to Verizon, AT and T, T Mobile. Most of the time, you're gonna be with the, one of those three regardless of what you feel. There are some smaller ones that you could be with, but for the most part, no matter how many times they get hacked or all these other things, like they're going to be in business. They've made it that way. So it's like a pro and a con. So an easy break in, they say, let's see, for the first time, the company is also officially confirmed that the ALPHV Black Cat ransomware operation was behind the attack. While the actual public-facing attack occurred on February 21st, Witty revealed the attacker had access to the company's network. Duh. Most of the time, when you realize you hacked, it's too late. If you're reading this, it's too late. Shout out to Drake. You have to already assume, in a lot of cases, you already compromised. But for them to be in your environment for 10 days means that your alerting, your detections, Sucks. everything is bad. You didn't have anything else picking up on... You know what's crazy Unusual is they probably activity. were getting the signals. They probably weren't looking in that software or tool, you know, at those alerts, which happens a ton. And I really like that. 
Yeah. I think it's, I don't know if I believe it was just 10 days. Yeah, like maybe that's just what they know right now. But 10 days is, it had to be longer than that for the impact of the attack based on what we've been seeing. Yeah, so it says the investigations, which are still ongoing. So I haven't even found any updated stuff on this, and they probably are eventually going to release it because I think, yeah, Change Self Care is a subsidiary of United. And I want to say the SEC got these new protocols, especially when it comes to healthcare, where you have to say this different stuff about when you was hacked and all this other stuff. So, February 12, 2024, they were hacked and uh, using stolen employee credentials. It is unknown whether those credentials were initially stolen via phishing attack or information stealing malware. They probably were stolen by both, to be honest. Um... The portal did not have multi-factor authentication. Once the threat actor gained access, they moved loudly within the systems in more sophisticated ways, more sophisticated ways, and exfiltrated data. Ransomware was deployed nine days later. So this is why, when it comes to lateral movement and being sophisticated, and like I said, unusual authentication or not authentication, but Ab- unusual abnormal or abnormal activity. activity. Right. It it takes you to be a person that's has some experience in doing this stuff because a smart person isn't gonna go in there and all of a sudden, hey, I'm going to make an email rule and forward all the stuff here and it's gonna delete so you don't see it. They're not that's gonna be noisy. Cause uh one of my companies we would look for stuff like that. Like if something was going out of the domain and it went on the approved senders list, like it would, it was first of all, it's automatically blocked. You had to get approved. So that's like an easy way for people not to be able to exfiltrate data that way. Now that these people are probably looking for like uh, different ports that may be open and if they could connect to since they're already in the system and they're going to not make a lot of noise. They're going to probably move the least amount of data as possible versus triggering an alarm. And so those are things you got to worry about. So now you got to use things like uh, UEBA where you're saying, okay, let's look at these individual accounts and see if they match up based on the data. Are they logging in when they normally do? Like, why are they doing this? They just perform this function. That's how you kind of try to combat some of that stuff, even though at the time you're already compromised. You just got to contain and stop the bleeding. But like I said, it was too late for them. 